Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's having a great day today. It is Grandma. Uh, it's that time, the kitchen talk time. So I hope everybody's having a great day. So we just gonna get ready and uh, jump into our conversation for today. Uh, this month, which is, this is the last week of September, but this month is uh, mental health and suicidal awareness month okay um so i was talking to my daughter a couple about a week or two ago and we was talking about the situation that's going on now with within our family and uh we was talking about how as a child if when you're brought up in a home that I guess you can define as dysfunctional um, and the only thing you've gotten out of that home throughout your childhood or the time that you was in that home through your childhood, all you can, all you took out of it was negativity. You know, there was no positive moments. So we was talking about how as an adult, you know, that plays over, it basically stays with you into your adult life and it 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 it, it kind of um, uh, deter well it kind of deter you on you know when it comes to handling different situations, uh, being in relationships, handling your emotions, and how how you um, you know handle interacting with people, and you know coming up in a dysfunctional family, um, a lot of times. Or you don't even look at it as being in a dysfunctional family because so many things, I was telling my daughter, so many things went on in my childhood that I didn't even think about it as being dysfunctional. To me, it was just regular everyday life, everyday living. And not even thinking back then how those different actions from different people would mold me and, 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 and um, you know, have me thinking the way I think or thought, because I've tried to break all that, or doing things the way that I thought they should have been doing, or just doing things the way you was taught to do, right or wrong. And now, you know, being 60 years old, I know that a lot of those traditional ways that was taught to me as a child was was wrong it was it was definitely dysfunctional and it was some it just wasn't right but these are ways that the, i mean it's like a generational thing it was taught to my parents from their parents and their parents taught them and on and on and on you know this is the way that they was taught you know and i was telling her that um you know back when i was growing up uh, you didn't really talk about your mental health or you didn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a discussion at all. You barely had a chance to talk about anything. And, you know, now looking back, I can see how that affected me and it affected a lot of my siblings, you know, but I'm not here to talk about their situations. I'm here to talk about mine. But, you know, as you get older and you learn that it's okay to talk about your mental health and it's healthy to talk about your mental health and it's something that it needs to be a discussion about. But like you said, as you go through the generations and, and you you see things from a different point of view and you know that these things are not right, you try to break that chain and you try to do different, you know, with your children and, and giving them the opportunity to use their voices, giving them the opportunity to talk about if they're sad, if they're depressed or if they're angry are anxious or you know whatever is going on with them you know allowing them that opportunity to talk about that and you know that's something like i said in my household growing up it wasn't it wasn't spoke on at all you know back in my day if 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 you act out and it could have been because you was angry or because you was sad or because you were depressed you know, you act out, then it was something wrong with you, you know, and that the first thing you would come out, out of other people's mouth was you was crazy. 
you know, she crazy, he crazy or whatever, you know, that was the go-to, like it was something, it wasn't, you know, they never looked at it like, you know, we need to sit down and have a discussion about this or we need to let her, you know, let this person express themselves. No, it was like he was crazy. So, you know, just having that conversation with her and talking about how as a child, you know, a child doesn't, they only know what is taught to them or what is told to them. And if they're constantly being told negative things about themselves or being belittled, put down, and never getting an encouraging word or never being told their love or never seeing any, any type of affectional um, uh, emotions uh, towards them in any kind of way, how that affects them when they get grown. You know, because they, they, they was in this, in this, in this damaged relationship or, or in this uh, dysfunctional environment for the, the first part of their life or however long, however, however long they was there. And once they get out of it, then they got to adjust to something different. I mean, there are situations where, you know, if a child is in a dysfunctional home or something is going on, you know, they may get taken out of that home and put into a, a different environment. And hopefully that's a better and a positive environment. But even with them going from, from there to here, it's a big adjustment to them. And they still need some type of counseling or some type of way to express themselves with that transition right there. You know, sometimes they don't even have a choice of what's most of the time. They don't even have a choice of what's going on, why they're being taken from here. Now they know that something is not right over here and they're probably hoping and praying that they're going to somewhere that's safer or they feel more comfortable. Because when a child doesn't feel comfortable, then they're, they're going to close up. They're not going to open up. But on the flip side of that, if a child is telling you they're not comfortable with something and they're in a situation and, and, and someone or something in that situation is making them feel uncomfortable, then you need to listen to them. You know, you need to li listen to these. These are little people and they're telling you something that's not right. So you need to listen to them. You know, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's such when it comes to looking back at dinner, different generation after generation and generation, it was it was based on this, um, I'm going to say, just me saying, Grana, on this slave mentality that you do as you're told or if you do something that they feel is not right, then they're, they're going to choose the punishment that that, that that person or that should get. And they don't have any say in anything. It was always do as you're told you don't get to ask no question you don't get to put your opinion in there regardless of whatever the results may be or however they may put some type of punishment in there you didn't have a choice you didn't have a say you know so you know thinking about um mental health awareness now and suicidal uh, awareness month i can definitely understand why uh a person grows up in one environment that has always been negative and as they get older I understand how it's hard for them to communicate their feelings or even be in a relationship you know be in a in a safe relationship a healthy relationship because they was never taught how to be in a relationship and I'm not saying that, that everyone had, that has been in a dysfunctional um, environment growing up or, or not a stable environment growing up that they may um, get to be adults and, and not change that narrative on their life or change that um, behavior to a positive behavior. I'm not saying that can't happen because that definitely can happen. There's always room in a person to improve on themselves and change um, their thinking and, and be more open to getting that a help or assistance that they need to change some things. All that can happen. All that is possible and all that can happen. But it was just interesting when I was having this conversation with her, um, you know, she was telling me, giving me some example of some different things. And um, it just made me just sit, you know, I just listened to her and it made me think that, you know, just thinking about myself, in, in my upbringing and the way I had raised my children and things that I did with one child, I mean, and I did with the other one and how, you know, I tried to break those chains and, and, and get rid of that dysfunctional and, and, and allow my children 
to have the opportunity to use their voices. Some came earlier than others, okay? Uh, it may have been at a, at a point where, you know, anything that you first learning is gonna take you a little longer to learn that and to get that and not, not um, uh, you know, get it perfect, but it's, it's a learning process and it's gonna take you some time to learn that and to Im improve on that and get better and better as you go. And it's the same thing, um, you know, with raising kids, you know, when you have your first child, um, you're definitely learning, especially if you do that, have a child at a very young age and you're learning as you go. And, and if the only, only um, map of that process or the only thing you know from that process has came from a dysfunctional place and that's what's instilled in you at the time then you kind of raise or start you know raising that child that way from from your experience or the way you was raised and at a certain point you hopefully you know you get to a point that this is not right this is not the way this need to go you know I didn't like how it made me feel when I was being raised that way or taught those things, I didn't like it, so I got to do something different. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just a lot, you know, it's a lot I've been thinking about and, and having those conversations with her, um, you know, just brought up a lot of memories and different things and things that should, that, that, that may, should have been done differently. And I own all that. I'm not perfect, definitely not perfect. And I try to be open when I'm hearing different conversations or having different conversations with my children and, you know, listen to them and, 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 and admit when I, you know, did something that they did not agree was the right way or whatever. But all that comes with your mental health and being able to let someone express themselves, you know, and, and when you hold and all that stuff inside of you, that's when you get to that point that you're depressed and you know, having those thoughts of suicide or, or not feeling that you're worthy enough to be here and no one cares about you or, or you have no voice to, to, and even as an adult, like I said, if you're bringing all that stuff up from your younger childhood and you still have that stuff inside of you and you've gotten to the point and you're older and you're married and you're trying to you know, work on this relationship, you're trying to have a relationship and you still feel like you don't have a voice or you still feel like you gotta tiptoe around other people's feelings, that's just not good. You should always be able to express yourself and get get out what you're feeling, you know, and, and, and give each other the opportunity to discuss whatever's going on or how you're feeling. People get sad. People get depressed. People get tired. People get anxious. You know, all those feelings you have to deal with in a positive way. You have to deal with them in a positive way. So those are just some of the things I was thinking about, you know, with this being... Um, Mental Health Awareness Month, because, you know, we, especially, and I'm just going to say we sometimes as black cultures or black people, we don't look at mental health in a, in a positive way. You know, we have that stigma on mental health. When you're talking about mental health, that, that this person is crazy. Something, you know, they just crazy, you know, and that's definitely not true. And all that does is continue to label someone un, unfairly and does not give that person the help that they need or give that person the opportunity to deal with that because they have this stigma, they have this label on them, you know? So that's just a little something I wanted to throw out there. You know, if you feel like you need to talk to someone, do it. Don't be afraid to go and get counseling or professional help or anyone that's on the outside that you feel can you can talk to that's going to be biased and not have an opinion or judge you or anything like that. Do it. Do it, you know, you need to be in, when you're doing, you're practicing self-care and taking care of yourself, you gotta be, you gotta start up here with your mind. You gotta take care of your mind and then come on down to the rest of your body, okay? All right, guys, it's just a little something I wanted to throw out there and just having that conversation with my daughter just made me think about some more things. So thank you, baby girl, for that conversation. But um, guys, y'all have a great day. Be kind to everybody you come in contact with. Don't forget to go back and show Grandma some love. Take care of all of those little things down there. Do all that little stuff down there for me, okay? You guys have a great day. I'm going to check you out next time around.